In today's episode, we're reading about some more entitled people. Gonna be a beautiful adventure, and I hope you're ready, guys. And with that being said, enjoy. Truck driver's butt hurt because I parked in front of him. I was looking for a spot to park in a small downtown area by the shop that I wanted to go to. There was a space right at the front, so I parallel parked. Well, the guy in the massive pickup truck behind me immediately honked at me. I was busy getting coins for the meter, and I couldn't initially tell that it was directed at me. He then dramatically spent a full minute trying to pull out of the spot, backing up, turning his wheels over and over. He finally got out and pulled up alongside me. He rolled down his window, but because his car was twice the height of mine I couldn't even see him and yelled at me park right next time and then peeled off for about a hundred feet where he had to abruptly stop at an intersection I got out of my car and I double checked to confirm that I was easily within the designated boundaries of my parking space maybe don't park your massive truck in a small space if you don't know how to handle it okay so there are multiple hilarious aspects to this when they pulled up to say something to you you couldn't even see them because they were so high up so you only hear a voice out of nowhere that's so funny like who's said that? Oh, some guy up in this truck. And also how they sped off really fast, but they had to stop at the intersection. That's not badass. That's so funny. And I bet you they thought they were being such a badass. Like, yeah, I'm in my truck and I'm angry, so I'm gonna peel out of here. And yeah, ultimately you didn't even do anything wrong. Well, what a start to the episode. Neighbor blames me for her husband's injury, even though she lets him wander when he has dementia. Hey everyone, I've got a story that really shook me up and has left me pretty flabbergasted at how entitled some people can be. I live next to a couple in their 50s. The husband has dementia and it's really unfortunate to see him going through that. But here's where things go south. His wife, my neighbor, constantly lets him wander around unattended. Often in my yard. Yesterday, I discovered him climbing on my shed in the backyard. Oh my god. Concerned for his safety, I immediately called my neighbor to come and get him. She did arrive but did nothing. Just stood there watching as her husband then jumped off the shed and hurt his leg. I thought she'd be grateful that I looked out for him but instead she called the police, alleging that it was my fault that he got hurt because it happened in my yard. Okay, so I can see why you're flabbergasted. She was yelling and making a huge scene, saying I should have done more to prevent the accident. The officers were pretty understanding once I explained the situation, and they saw my surveillance footage. They agreed it wasn't my responsibility to supervise her husband, especially when she lets him wander without any oversight. However, the nerve of this woman, she had the audacity to blame me for an incident that she could have easily prevented by just properly caring for her husband. The entitlement is just mind-blowing. Now I'm left wondering if I should install a fence or what measures I need to take to protect myself legally. Because this is beyond ridiculous. Any advice would be appreciated. Oh my god, how is that your fault? The top comment says, you need to call Adult Protective Services immediately. This man is in danger. Yeah, that's so awful. And are they like embarrassed or something? I'm trying to understand how they can really think that it's your fault. Like this could easily happen with you not even being home. Oh yeah, could happen without you even realizing it. So how the hell are you meant to do anything about it? Oh, the audacity. Yeah, I hope the husband's okay. It sounds like they really need somebody who's gonna actually care for them, or at least supervise them. Yeah, wow, the entitlement. I get why you said you were flabbergasted. New hire feels entitled to treat support staff like crap, so I fired him. Best use of my promotion to date. I'm an attorney, and although I am young, I'm in a managing position. The firm hired a new older attorney. Needless to say, he was already having a hard time adjusting to the fact that his boss is 25 years younger than him, but he held it together, except that he was awful with support staff, paralegals and legal assistants alike. The guy was so entitled that he would accost the senior paralegal, my paralegal, because he quote unquote should not have to use a legal assistant giving his seniority. So he would accost the senior paralegal daily and command her to transcribe his notes for him. I even overheard him call her girl, and I immediately told him to not do that, and I reminded him that she doesn't work for him, but if he needs help with something he should tell me. He continued. Turns out he's technologically inept. HR forced a meeting to discuss basic tech stuff and we all needed to attend it. He fell asleep during the meeting. I called him out during the meeting and I told him to go and splash water on his face. After the meeting I asked him what the hell and he basically said that he thought the meeting was for the girls aka support staff. So long story short I fired him this morning. He was not happy and felt as though his seniority was not appreciated and that he worked too hard in his life to have to do his own work. He expected 
expected to have his own associate to boss around, and he was disappointed to see that he had to respond to me. Ask yourself, if he is so good, why is he looking for a job in his late 60s? I'm taking the girls out for drinks today. Good riddance. Edited. My 60s comment is definitely a snarky comment directed at him specifically. I found this man to be horribly arrogant and entitled just because he was senior. I certainly don't mean to insult an entire demographic. Take it as you will. Oh yeah, for sure. You can get entitled people at any age, which is kind of surprising too. And a little bit sad. Like you're in your 60s, you should know better than this. But I guess entitlement knows no age. But yeah, good on you OP. People like this can't think they can do stuff like this. I'm hoping they learnt some sort of lesson from this. But yeah, I've got my doubts. Cause yeah, that's the thing. Wouldn't you have learnt your lesson by now if you're 60? You know, like if you're still going to be acting like this in your 60s and it hasn't changed your entire life, then is it likely to ever change? Probably not. Entitled kids steal presents that are meant for special needs kids and get punished. An elderly woman at my church had brought some expensive chocolates for the special needs members for Christmas. They were from a very well-known local chocolate shop in my city. She purchased the gifts to honor her recently deceased grandson who was also special needs. The presents were placed under the tree that the church set up and all the presents will be gifted to everybody after the sermon. However, during the gifting, the woman realized the presents that she bought for the special needs kids weren't gifted to them. She brought it up to the pastor who had a few other search for the presents which had specific white wrapping with gold ribbons. After a few minutes, they eventually found the presents which were already halfway eaten by a few kids. Their parents were not happy with what the kids did and they apologized. To punish the kids, the parents offered the gifts that the entitled kids received to the special needs kids. This upset the entitled kids who threw tantrums, resulting in them getting dragged to the cars and being driven back home early. My mother communicates with the parents of those entitled kids and from what she's told, the kids are still upset at being punished for stealing the presents. None of them seem to think that it was wrong to steal from others and they blame the special needs kids for getting them into trouble. Oh, that's so frustrating. I don't understand people like this. How do they not feel bad? Like, how do they not realize what they did was wrong? And like, they're obviously old enough to know better. There's no excuse. Yeah, that sucks. I hope they realize what they did was wrong. The next one is called I am the most disabled. I flew back to the States this week and I experienced this one firsthand. I'm disabled from a stroke nearly three years ago. I do usually walk with a cane except for places like airports or malls or any place with slick shiny floors. There I use a rolling walker. It's easier to navigate. Right before boarding on my first flight there was a huge gaggle of folks blocking where you enter to get your ticket scanned. That was annoying. Several of them told me to go wait by the gate desk and I did. They were entitled by not allowing me near the gate entry point but it's not the focus of this. I went up to the desk and I apologized for deviating from the plan and I talked to the gate agent. She said, no big deal, I can pre-board from there. Now the pre-boarding. Look, I'd love to be the last one getting on the flight because I have no real love for sitting on the stupid plane for 30 to 40 minutes before takeoff, but I know I'm slow because of the balance issues and I have no desire to hold up anyone behind me. So I pre-board and I gate checked the walker, got scanned, got down the jetway and I had a gate agent ask me to hold where I was because the cleaning team was still on the plane. While I'm waiting, there comes up behind me an older couple, like my age and I'm only in my early 60s. Neither have visible disabilities, but that's okay. Many people don't look disabled. As we're standing there waiting to board, the wife calls over my shoulder to the gate agent, asking if she can move forward because she's quote unquote more disabled than I am. The agent says sure, and this entitled lady literally pushed me so that I fell right there on the jetway. Oh my god! The agent did help me up, but said nothing to the entitled lady and her husband, who were now in front of me. I decided it wasn't even worth it to say anything to these idiots. Who pushes somebody clearly disabled? just to get on a plane first. I was stuck behind them long enough that the regular passengers started boarding and I was scrambling to get settled in. Yeah, what sort of piece of garbage does something like this? Ew, that's revolting. That's unbelievable. How can somebody do that? And also, they didn't apologize. Like, they obviously didn't care that they pushed you over. Oh, that's infuriating. I'm sorry that happened, OP. Oh, God, I feel physical pain from this. Why are people like this? The next one is called CEO type thinks he's the boss of me. About a year ago, I-45 male was taking a stroll in a small nature reserve near my house, together with my wife and my dog. Further along the path, an older entitled man, 70 maybe, was standing with his, I assume, family, son and daughter maybe. They were probably in their 30s. As we came closer, we saw that he was talking to his dog, a young husky who sat in the grass in front of him. Stuff like sit and stay. As we passed, his pup, no leash, stood up and walked towards our dog who was on a leash. They seemed friendly, so I let them sniff and greet each other. This man walks up to me with an authoritarian CEO-like air about him and is pointing and waving his finger at me in a belittling manner. Entitled man, can't you see that I'm 
training my dog. You should not let your dog distract my dog when I'm obviously training him. Now, I've worked very hard for years to become my own boss and not have anybody tell me what to do. I wasn't planning on having a stranger treat me like he was my boss. I'm a peaceful guy normally, but this entitled man struck the wrong chord. I got angry and I copied his finger pointing. Me. You don't get to talk to me that way. Do you always talk to strangers like that? His family in the background awkwardly glance at him, obviously ashamed of him. Entitled man. Yes, but you should not. Me interrupting. That dog should be on a leash, which is the rule of the nature reserve. High fines too if you get caught. Entitled man. You are right about that, but I am training him and you should. Me interrupting him again. You should learn how to talk to strangers and show some manners. At this point, I turn my back to him and I walk away, saying unbelievable to my wife, just loud enough to make sure that he heard me. He spluttered on a bit, but we ignored him from that point. To be honest, I felt quite good about how I handled this. A few years ago, I would have let him walk over me. Not anymore. Yeah, definitely. Good on you, OP. Hopefully they realized what they were doing wrong. I feel like that a lot with rude people, that not enough people tell them when they're being rude, because so many people would be so rude without other people saying something. So yeah, good on you for standing up for yourself, OP. Entitled mum gets angry that I won't share. This happened a while ago. I learnt long ago how to study effectively for myself for a test. I was in college and I needed to study for an upcoming test, so I was in the local library at a single table. I had everything spread out and colour-coded with coloured pens, pencils, markers and highlighters. I was absorbed by what I was doing. A sweet, cute and adorable little girl came to me to ask politely if she could use some of the paper and coloured pencils. I told her no. She smiled and nodded and went back to her mum. I was about to go back to studying when her mum appeared by my side and looked angry as hell. She told me to either let her daughter use my things or put it away. Her daughter looked miserable and embarrassed. I felt really sorry for her. I just stared at her in complete surprise at the sheer entitlement. I had heard stories of similar people, but I thought it must have been exaggerated. I told her to leave me alone and go away. She told me that I was being disrespectful to my elder. Oh, get out of here. With a hard roll of my eyes, I told her, Be arch, I'm at least a few years older than you. She started screaming, which brought the librarian over. Yo, I have never seen this woman be tough. I thought she was a pushover. She was so sweet and treated everybody like they were her babies. She was like the grandma that everybody wanted. She went from sweet grandma to raging badass. Hell, she scared me worse than the time I got mock charged by a mama bear. She yelled at her. What did I tell you about coming here again? Your daughter is welcome to come here. You are not. You've been banned from here for harassing everybody here. Get out now. I'm pretty sure my eyes were popping out of my face. I was definitely slack jawed. The entitled mum was backing up pretty fast. Then from raging badass in a split second back to sweet elderly grandma. She gave the little girl a hug and a kiss on her forehead. She came over to me to see if I was okay and grinned at my shocked face. I always let people think that I'm too sweet to be tough. The surprise is effective. I nodded and I started packing up my things and I told her that I'd never be able to refocus on my studies for the day. Well, not only good on you for standing up for yourself, but yeah, the absolute legend of a librarian. That's so awesome, but it does make sense. Librarians would see all sorts of stuff. So yeah, a lot of them are probably pretty tough. That was a really satisfying post. Mother-in-law is mad that we refuse to reschedule Christmas. So my former mother-in-law is quite the human. And I use that term very loosely. When the kids were born, she bragged to my parents that she would get to be the one hanging out with the kids, watching them grow and all that because my parents lived in another country at the time. Well, okay, so first off, that is so mean. The day my parents got on the plane to go home, my mother-in-law disappeared as well. She did the same to her own son when he was born. So again, not surprising. From what I gather while I was married to her son, she was a major absentee mum that left him with whoever for months at a time. It messed him up bad. Unfortunately for me, he hides it well. This woman has never been there either for her son, my ex-husband, let alone her grandkids. That's selfish B arch. I doubt they've ever had a single thought of anybody but herself. Her son is an absentee dad as well. No surprise there. He learnt that trick from his mum. So it's been myself and my long-term partner and his amazing family who have raised these kids together for the past 13 years. The odd Christmas would get a call from former mother-in-law asking if I'd bring the kids to her. It's not terrible as she lives about 30 minutes away from us. 30 minutes and she's never made the effort to see them at our home. Though she has been invited every single year. Every time we arrive at her home she's drinking. Her husband is always drunk and gets mean at the drop of a hat. They then make comments comparing my partner to her son. No comparison. Like comparing a nugget of dog crap versus solid gold. But obviously it's incredibly uncomfortable to say the least. It's even worse when my partner doesn't come with us. And that often left us scrambling to attend five Christmas dinners over two days. And this means we had to leave our big family dinner early. Or arrive super late because she and her husband refused to reschedule for even an hour 
before or after. The big family dinner has happened for the past 60 on the same day at the same time and has over 90 people attending. It can't be rescheduled. Her dinner is us showing up at 5 to a cold and half-eaten meal because they decided to eat early and not tell us other than we four. They are the only other attendees. Her son won't even go, which is how I got roped into this every year. The last few years have been really rough with my grandparents passing on and my own parents becoming incapacitated. So the Christmas dinner crawl has dwindled to a more reasonable two. Ours with my parents and my partner's family dinner. This morning at 7am, my former mother-in-law called and demanded, not asked, that she and her husband see the kids who are now nearly grown. The kids said no, they don't want to go there this year and said that she should come here for our dinner instead. I obviously don't like her much, but I do try to hide it well for my kids' sake. And she is my kids' grandmother and as such they have every right to include her to dinner in our home. They also invite their dad every year, though he usually spends the holidays drunk and high, crying to whoever will still listen to him babble about how lonely he is. Yeah, he's just as ridiculous as his mother. He just hides it much better. So we told her she's welcome up, so long as she and her husband are not drinking. We've been through that enough with my ex, and we have a no alcohol home because of it. She agrees, though you can tell she's not happy about it. I tell her we'll be sitting down around 5pm. She lost her crap, claiming that it's ridiculous that grown adults can't have a drink with supper, and states that what time she sits down with her husband to eat, you can just change the time, right? No, we have eight people eating, four of which are traveling over an hour to get here, and damned if I'm messing with their schedules to accommodate two people who have never once accommodated us. I said it slightly nicer, but I'm sure you could tell that I was on the verge of laughing at her. She got angry, hung up, and has now started posting on social media about how I refuse to allow her up to give her grandbabies their gifts, and I do have to say she and her son are well off, and play the extravagant gift game well enough to keep my kids interested, which is just another form of toxic manipulation, but the kids don't see it that way, yet, so we say nothing. Joke's on her though, apparently I'm not the only one that noticed the crappy treatment of myself, my partner, or our kids over the years. My inbox is now flooded with messages on my side, sending me screenshots of what she's been calling me and my partner, telling me she's toxic, we definitely know, and how she takes photos from my social media and pretends like she sees her grandkids more than once a year, even though she can't tell anybody what grade they're in. Every message warns me to keep my kids away from her and my son because they're terrible people. Former mother-in-law is on my social media, but I must have been blocked because when I look, there's nothing there. As in, not even her name shows up in searches anymore. I'm so happy, really. This was the best Christmas present I could have expected after two very hard years. Thank you, Santa, for allowing the trash to finally take itself out on this holiday season. It's been a very long and frustrating 14 years, and I appreciate it more than you'll ever know. And there's an update here. Update, wow, I did not expect this to blow up like it has. This has been a long time coming, and it's like a breath of fresh air now that it's over. My kids both cut contact with her over this. They've also cut contact with their dad as he defended his mother by telling my kids what he really thought of my partner and I. We're unanimous that we are done. My kids, they've been incredibly supportive and just amazing. They appreciate us allowing them to make up their own minds and having that relationship with their grandmother. And they claim that they understand why we hid it from them for so long. My oldest is furious at his grandmother and father. The youngest is still very conflicted. But he is young enough not to remember any of the negatives from his father and I's relationship. Yeah, I'm sad it has to come to this. But honestly, it was the best potential outcome I could have possibly have wished for. I wish we could have continued on with my kids never knowing the difference. But many of you are right that I was not protecting them from toxic people. Even if they never experienced the toxicity until now. Wow, that was unbelievable. Yeah, OP, they sound bloody awful. Like the mother-in-law is the epitome of entitlement. I don't know how you dealt with it for so long. The stuff about how you had to do Christmas every year. Oh, that would have been a nightmare. And yeah, no contact with somebody like this sounds good. Yeah, wow, that was so wild. Entitled parent sends kids to my house. This morning I was out mowing my lawn. I happened to be wearing a ratty t-shirt that had a logo from a video game that I enjoy playing. We live in a very small town in northern Wisconsin. Everyone just kind of minds their own business, so I've never had much interaction with any of our neighbors, which is okay with us. One of the houses that's next to ours is a rental property that the owners converted into a duplex. The bottom half is empty and there are two adults, male and female, that live in the upper unit and they've got two kids. I've never spoken to the parents as they've never even made an attempt to give the neighbor wave when we see the adults outside. However, this morning the mum starts walking over to me so I stop the lawnmower and say good morning. She comments about how we have such a big house. I tell her it's because we like having a lot of pets, four cats and two dogs, and that we usually adopt the animals that have medical issues. Since I'm a nurse and my niece is a vet, we make a little bit more chit chat and go about finishing mowing the lawn. I go inside to do some other chores and I hear a knock on the door. I check the cameras and there are two kids standing at my door. I make it a policy that I don't interact 
interact with children that don't have a parent with them, especially because I'm a gay man and with the current political state, to me it's better to be safe than sorry. So I ignore the knocks and I continue with my chores. A few minutes go by and the woman I spoke to earlier in the yard is standing there. So I open the door. She's upset that I ignored her children when they came over as they wanted to play with our pets. I told her that I'd never allow children into my house that don't have a parent with them and that our pets were not play toys for her children. So then she asked if they could play a video game since I must be a gamer because of the shirt I had on. I reiterated that I'd never allow children who do not have an adult with them in our home. She then starts going on about how she needs some alone time because her boyfriend left her and she's the only one on the lease because he has bad credit and she can't afford her rent and she just needs some time to herself. I apologize that she's having a rough time but that my husband and I would not be willing to entertain her children for her. She looked perplexed for a bit there and I was curious as to what confused her and then she said something that made me lose it in a major way. She said, gross, why do blanks have to be my neighbors? Oh my god. I replied, look here you nasty C word. You will never say that to me or my husband again. You need to leave right now. And I slammed the door in her face. She kept on pounding on our door, screaming all kinds of slurs and obscenities because we have had some issues with kids destroying property. We have cameras all over the outside of our house. So I turned on the alarm on all of them. She got the message and she left. Like what the actual hell? I've never been so glad to have cameras everywhere outside. Oh, that's revolting. And once again, good on you for standing up for yourself. Yeah, I feel like that has to be enough for today. We need to read something wholesome really bad. And yeah, that's enough entitled people for today. I like my coffee like I like my women. Kind and supportive. You're doing great. I care about you. Oh, that's so awesome. That was by IC Sandwich Guy. IceCreamSandwichComics.com There's something so awesome about comics. And everyone we read is always so creative. Two photos taken an hour apart. Before and after adoption. Wow, that's so beautiful. Like, oh, yay. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. That's so sweet. There's nothing like seeing a dog super happy. Boston Firefighter reunites with the children that he saved from a fire. 45 years later. Wow, that's all so beautiful. Like, hey, I saved your life a long time ago. That would have been so cool for them to meet up again. Yeah, wow, that's beautiful. And on that beautiful note, thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you guys had a wonderful time. And if you did, you know what to do. Make sure you like and subscribe and let me know down below what you thought. And the comment of the day today goes to Archer4424. I'm not having the best time ever, but I'm warm and cute and everything's gonna be okay. I think this is my new mantra. Not even joking. I've been having an absolute garbage few months, but I shall survive. I'm warm and cute and it'll be okay eventually. Wow, yeah, absolutely, Archer. I'm sorry that you've been having a few garbage months, but yeah, that's right. It will get better. And yeah, good on you for being so strong. You should be proud of yourself. You should all be proud of yourself, guys. That was a really fun episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. And as always, make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye!